One. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Sean's Bean in A Very Northern Christmas. Uh, my name is Anya. Um, I am going to be the uh, the director bean of this game. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and uh, you can find me everywhere, Lolly on Cosplay. Uh, I'm going to go counterclockwise on my screen, so Apollo, you are next. Hey, y'all. My name is Apollo. I'm an Irish uh, TTRPG performer. Oh, cosplayer, maybe voice actor, we don't know what anymore. Uh, you can find me on the internet at, at Tolner Apollo, and uh, I'll be starting off with the, I don't think I'm going to live that long. Uh, I'll be starting off as a Shakespearean bean. Very cool. Then Shelby Lane, you're next. Hello, everyone. As was mentioned, I am Shelby Lane. My pronouns are she, they. You can find me on most platforms as Abyssal Song. If you want a link to all of the chaos, shelbylane.card.co. I will be playing Boromir Bean. For as long as he lives. <laughs> yes. Because one does okay. not just simply walk into a, into a major streaming service. <laughs> okay. Then we have uh, Alice. Hi guys, sorry, you're going to see me all over the screen for a second because my giant container of iced coffee just decided to end itself. Oh no. It's fine, I pulled a shirt out of my hamper and I'm soaking up the floor right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but hi, I am Alice. This is early for me, but um, I use she, they pronouns. Today, I am starting off with Shooty Bean. Whether or not Shooty Bean lives long, that is up for debate, but that'll be a bad debate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere online at Alice Hart or Hellion Hart if I am unable to claim Alice Hart. Okay. And then last but not least, Faye. Oh, hi. That's me. Um, I'm Faye. Any all pronouns are fine. If it's a pronoun, it's good to use for me. Uh, I will be playing Stark Bean for as long as he may survive. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see how far that is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so just to start, I'm going to explain what exactly we're playing here, uh, which is a game by Grant Howitt, uh, Sean's Bean Star in A Very Northern Christmas. So uh, just to give you a little bit of an intro to it, I'm going to read the first couple paragraphs on this. Know this, Sean Bean is an ancient being. Back when the world was young, a cosmic demon witch cursed him. Time after time, he has been slain and re-emerged from a dimensional portal in Yorkshire. Only if he survives to the end of a film will the curse be lifted, and he will be allowed to die a final time on his own terms. But this has never happened. No more. The Shans gather, pulled from beyond time and space. They muster their forces for the final confrontation, starring in a streaming services, a Christmas special, A Very Northern Christmas. They infiltrate the set and take up positions in the camera, script writing, props, set decoration, and craft services crews. Can the Shans Bean satisfy the strange demands of the streaming services production team and avoid Avoid having funding cut and production shut down. And as the line between fiction and reality breaks down, can at least one of them avoid the grisly deaths that await them at every turn? Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, so what I had previously told y'all before uh, we cut to uh, this section uh, is going to change based off of the description that I just said. So, uh, yes, you are all in the production crew. If one of you wants to uh, be in the cast and have it be very confusing, you definitely can. I'm just picturing, like, a Sean Bean with a really bad fake mustache and beard <laughs> just masquerading around in the in the background, being like, oh, yes, I'm a different person <laughs> than I'm the so main character. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, to start off with, 
Uh, you all have arrived at this set after this massive conversation, all of the Sean's being together, uh, trying to figure out how to make this work. What uh, is each of you doing as you come to the set of A Very Northern Christmas? What do you look like? What are you wearing? And what, uh, what role on the set do you want to claim? Whoever wants to go first. Hmm. I'll go first. I went last last mm -hmm. time. <laughs> there you go. So it is a very traditional fantasy, you know, dark leather armor, keep you warm against the cold. Uh, I There is a sword, um, but there's also, to keep things festive, the little thin paper crown that you get from the Christmas crackers. Um, and I think as my bean, the best way that I can keep my sword, as well as hopefully keep everyone, all the other beans safe, is in props. Mm. So, um, I, I'm going to be heading there. Uh, hopefully no one at this streaming production team thinks that I'm out of place uh, as I will be searching to see if there are any dangerous implements that can cause one of our grisly demises. Okay, so I'm going to say um, as you're searching around trying to find anything potentially gruesome and deadly, um, go ahead and roll and I'm going to give this a difficulty rating of three to start with. Okay, and I'm rolling a d6 because I don't think that this gets into honesty, tradition, or tenacity. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but... That is a three. Hey, <laughs> you beat the difficulty. Very cool. So as you're scouting around, trying to find anything dangerous, you notice that in the props of A Very Northern Christmas, there appear to be several weapons that are a part of this Christmas story, which is very confusing. First of all, it's a very different kind of Christmas movie uh, that, given that Sean Bean Prime is in it, also makes sense. I'm going to call him Sean Bean Prime because that makes it less confusing. Like Super uh, Prime? Does he punch a hole through the multiverse? <laughs> <laughs> he does now. There you go. It's a special power. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, I would say... Uh, Rather than letting me describe it, what is one uh, prop that turns out to not be a prop that uh, your bean finds? Ooh. You know what? Since this is a game full of shenanigans, mm -hmm. let it be a flamethrower that's not really a prop. Ooh. <laughs> So, uh, yes, on the props table, because, of course, the props table is very neatly organized, laid out. Everything has its, like, taped off spot where it's supposed to go, labeled what is supposed to be there. And you see that on this props table, there is a label for a flamethrower, but it hasn't been tested. And so as you go and you check it, you actually go and shoot off the flamethrower, you know, into the sky as a, as a safety control. And it shoots out like 15, 20 feet in the air and catches something on fire. <laughs> I just, I look up uh, towards where I'm sure that there are like the lighting for these uh, things and the perhaps like uh, electrical crew. And I'm like, uh, apologies. And I just put the. What are you doing right down, down there? <laughs> Safety testing. It's not very safe. Uh, that's why it needed to be tested. <laughs> they just shake their heads at each other, look, and like start clambering along the catwalk <laughs> elsewhere. 
Meanwhile, uh, our next bean enters into the scene. Who's next? I will. I will go. Okay. Yes. My bean, as mentioned before, is the very handsome, with the rugged jawline. I am Boromir Bean. <laughs> Wearing, of course, the very not subtle colors of Gondor and the oh so attractive, immaculately styled hair that is way, way too perfect for a fantasy production where everyone else is dirty. <laughs> so I'm going to say that because I am Boromir, I'm used to being the unsung hero. The one who mm. always takes the falls and gets accused and blamed for everything. I'm going to be Bean Prime's personal assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have a headset, a clipboard, mm. at least three different pens, mm. and, and Bean Prime's coffee. And he, like, Beans. doesn't even look at you as he grabs yeah. the coffee and just starts drinking. Beans, beans, as it were. <laughs> I'm so sorry I interrupted the joke. That is amazing. Written on the cup with a Sharpie. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> he looks at it, laughs, takes a big swig. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Right. Um, so what exactly do we need to do today? Is this... What day, in, what day of the set is it? Oh, God. Time means nothing to me. Yes, yes. Very good. Um, today, and I check the clipboard, which has, which has a few random pieces of paper on it. Mm -hmm. It and doesn't it actually the... have any. Nothing, any nothing important. actually to the nothing actually pertinent to the production and then i listen in on my headset which is my lifeline to what's going on on the crew okay and i and today is the unlikely action sequence okay um so as you're listening in i uh want you to roll this is gonna be a difficulty two Okay. And this, because you're listening to the radio set, none of the sexy bean uh, yep. proficiencies are applicable yep. here. Unfortunately, no. Although I can look mm -hmm. very sexy while pressing on the headset. This is true. It so, still doesn't help you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <The> roll. <laughs> Five. <laughs> hey. I look, I look very sexy while listening on the headset. You do. And so as you're listening in on the headset, you hear someone, you don't know who, because you aren't Bean Prime, who uh, was actually, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, not assigned, uh, cast, my brain. Mm -hmm. It's the afternoon for me and I'm still not awake. Uh, <laughs> Bean Prime was the one cast. You don't know the voices of all of these people. You just showed up with all of the other beans to infiltrate the set today. And so you hear a woman's voice talking about, um, oh, this, uh, this major death scene uh, that happens at the end of these, uh, this action sequence. And, you know, he really needs to make it look real. Uh, she's saying she just it needs to look as real as possible. So you get the sense that, oh, something bad is going to happen, which is no surprise to you. You, Sean Be Sean's Bean, have died a multitude of times. So this is what you were waiting for. So I will I will nod as if I'm aware, as if I've been aware this whole time. Mm hmm showing off that impressive jawline and say, it's the death scene, sir. Of course it is. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Right then. He glances off to one side, and as he does, we pan over to May who I? would like to enter next. Of course. In the writer's room. Frantic. <laughs> 
truly uh like lacrimosa is playing somewhere in the background <laughs> papers are flying everywhere no pens just a shit ton of quills and ink bottles is shakespearean bean dressed in full shakespearean attire like this sean bean before they were here was on set rehearsing for macbeth did not have time to change found a graphic tee put it over the costume <laughs> He has a little floppy hat. <laughs> <laughs> he runs out of the writer's room and just starts sprinting down to set. <laughs> the rewrites! The rewrites! <laughs> he just reaches the director. <sighs> Pretty and well met. Sean Bean must not die on this day. <laughs> And uh, the director you see here is a um, a younger man who seems to be very put off by the fact that he's uh, directing a Christmas movie. It's not his cup of tea. He's not really a fan of it. Michael and Bay. so okay. he's just like. <laughs> oh, <it's Michael. laughs> oh, you know, like, yeah. if I'm going to do this, I want to do it my way, you know. Just, uh, there need to be more explosions. We need to make this as <laughs> diehard as possible. Michael, <laughs> I'm going to put, put his hand on his shoulders. Michael, the people want this. And you know that the people want this. Michael, please, I have a rewrite. In the fr Today, not the death scene. We'll film that in a few days' time. And how about today, he meets a lovely lady. I love the leading lady that we've cast behind your back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and at the end, you can have a whole city explode, but they walk away from the explosion at a safe distance. <laughs> you will be the legendary director that makes Sean Bean live. This sounds like a rousing okay. speech to me. Uh, it, does. it does. It does sound like a rousing speech. So I'm going to say <laughs> that you get to roll your D8 instead of a D6 because this is related to your bean. Uh, it's one of his proficiencies. And I'm going to make this because the highest score I can do is a five. It is complex and difficult to convince this director. You have to beat a five. Why do I set myself up like this, actually? Oh, that's a six. Yes! <laughs> We've only had successes so far. This is amazing. It's just time. Okay. Hey. <laughs> He's like nodding his head, like rubbing at his chin and thought like, mm, that might look very cool. Maybe with sparklers. Make it festive, you know? Yes, yes. Still yes, explosive, Mike. but festive. Mm, okay, I'm going to need you to talk to our pyrotechnics crew and see if we can do... Oh, this is going to require a little bit of work. We might not be able to do it today, but I do like the idea of the explosion. Sean's ready today for an action. Let's just have it... Look, we don't have to not hurt Sean Bean. Just have him be emotionally hurt, you know? Well... Hopefully, actor-wise, he doesn't get hurt at all because that would be uh, an insurance problem. But, you know, um, if we were to... Um... Thinking about all the times I've died in productions of Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, insurance, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if we do some kind of, like, grievous injury to his character and then the love interest sweeps in and takes care of him, oh, that could be really cool. Exactly. I'm here for it. I'll see what I can do. What are you wearing? He's just noticed <laughs> your clothing. I caress his cheek and I say, don't worry about it. And I turn and run away. <laughs> writers, they're always so unique. Full sprint back to the writer's room. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he has the athleticism of Sean Bean. I don't know how good that is. Uh, it's, I'm I'd assuming say pretty good. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's an action hero. -ish. Yeah, and depending on 
Well, it was like timey period clothes. He's wearing like a full king's cape and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and probably like some kind of like pantaloons or something. Oh, you like... know they're poofy. Question. Oh, is the, is the cape over or under the graphic tee? It's over the graphic. He took off the cape, put on okay. the graphic tee, put the cape back on. Okay. Okay, that was an important question. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, cold outside. It, it would have been awkward if not. Yeah. <laughs> it's layering. Uh, amazing. It's layering. Very important for surviving the cold. <laughs> exactly. It's well, so and we have our final bean. Shooty Bean, how are you entering the scene? Uh, Shooty Bean is a man of few words. So uh, mm. he he received his position during this meeting of beans. Um, he started off choosing his words carefully, maybe a little too carefully, because he started off with beans, and then there was apparently too long of a pause. <laughs> so someone assigned him craft services. I love this for So him. we see Shooty Bane rolling in a catering cart from somewhere backstage. Um, he's he's like one of the slightly more buffer beans. So um, he's like wearing the white chef's um, jacket and it's kind of like just a little too tight. And he's got on like a little white chef's hat. He did not need either, but it's, it's method acting. <laughs> Um, so he's rolling this like catering cart full of like white bean chili, hummus, uh, three bean salad, uh, <laughs> refried beans, yes, little coffee cups, <laughs> and is um <laughs> carrying it over to uh where craft services is set up. Okay. And uh, you see a um, a rather tiny person standing there, but uh, you know from like the minimal experience that you've had with them so far that they are like uh, almost uh, like a chihuahua in that they are very, very angry and make sure like that everyone knows that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> All if I'm picturing is the ratatouille chef. Uh <laughs> I mean accurate. <laughs> uh but they they look over to you and go, you there, new guy, what are you doing? What took you so long? Cart broke. <laughs> That's not good enough. Hurry up, get everything on the table. We don't have much time. They're going to be shooting the next scene soon, and the, everyone needs their food. Okay. <laughs> and they just are, like, chattering nonstop, uh, just, uh, like, filling the space with words, which kind of works good. out nicely yeah. for Shooty Bean. <laughs> But clearly, this is a uh, this is more of a like how they deal with stress kind of thing, and everything is stressful. <laughs> Mental note to switch this due to decaf later. <laughs> uh, so as you are preparing, is there anything that you hid in your cart? Out of curiosity, a gun. <laughs> I love that you're committing to the bit even <laughs> this. <laughs> so I think that I need you to uh, to sneak to make sure that this uh, individual does not find the gun as they are also like unloading this cart. Um, I'm gonna say difficulty of three. And this is stealthy. Yeah, so but Shooty D8. Bean is not stealthy. Oh, but Shooty Bean is not talking. Bean is. Yeah, bean Shooty is Bean is not talking. Yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Spy Bean is stealth. It's the next lineup. So yeah. if I'm not do talking, need... do I get to roll a D8? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> That's a four. Or we have not had a single failure yet, which given this is the intro scene, <laughs> good. <laughs> hey, that's all right. 
even even if you know, even if Shooty Bean had failed, he has another gun hidden in his chef's toque. That's why he's wearing it. <laughs> there you go. And also those guns. <laughs> I hit my mic. Um, okay, cool. So uh, how do you hide your gun from this uh, person in charge of craft services? Um, I put a- another jacket over it. <laughs> Just all of the jackets. Perfect. Yes. For an emergency. So you managed to... There you go. You managed to uh, sneak the gun... Um, you can specify what kind of gun if you want to, but you you hide it uh, with a jacket, and the uh, this tiny figure in charge of craft services does not notice as they're like frantically preparing everything, making look everything at uh, making everything look nice. And at the end of it, they kind of nod and go, "Not too bad. Okay, okay, okay. We got this. We can do this. Yeah." And uh, people are starting to descend, gathering food, whatnot. Uh, and uh, I would say that this is a moment for a certain PA to come over to grab food for Bean yes. Prime. Yes. <sighs> and I will, I will do my best kind of hairy discovery as I've seen PAs do in my mm. other productions. I will do my best to scurry over, even though Boromir does not scurry. He walks with purpose, so it looks awkward. Mm -hmm. um, I will uh, I will approach the craft cars, Sean, with a greeting nod. Turn nod. Mm -hmm. Very obvious wink. <laughs> <laughs> well... And brandishing the coffee cup. I need a refill. Takes the coffee cup. Refills it. Also gives you a plate of beans on toast. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This will, this, will, uh, this will make me look like I've anticipated his needs. <laughs> Thank you. And as you are uh, thanking our shooty bean, um, a uh, you hear a shout off from the distance and there is a large runaway cart careening its way towards the two of you at craft services. Uh, so I need you to uh, roll a d6 to see how you do escaping this cart. Okay. Hmm. Well, I was going, was just like a golf cart. Uh, yeah, it's I a just very punch large it out of the way. <laughs> you just show up and punch question. It. Um, Six. Where? Okay. Uh, before the results of this, because if I can help, yep. uh, uh, where mm -hmm. would props be in relation to the uh, craft services? In, yeah. I would say that you're not too far away. You would have heard the shout and exclamations as people are scattering. Okay, cool. Um, seeing that I'm next to all of these props and we're shooting the action scene today, uh, perchance, would there be uh -huh. uh, a set of uh, netting or anything like that to for the safety purposes that I could throw in the way of the cart to try and protect my fellow beams. Ooh, I like it. Absolutely that exists. 100%. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I don't think this plays into any of my uh, things because it's not honesty, tradition, or tenacity, but... Uh, I mean, tenacity, maybe a little bit. Ooh. If, I would if Director that. Bean says so, I will do it. So that's a D8 for yep. me then, right? Yep. Uh, it is a difficulty of five as there are crowds of people all around. Uh, I'm helping so. go. I'm helping because I'm okay. punching this golf cart out of the way. Uh huh. All right. So uh, I'm barely riding the line of success. That is a five. <laughs> <laughs> all That's of your my second meets it beats it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All I've rolled is like bare minimum. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so uh, describe for us this combo. Uh, so let's see, with our uh, with our shooty bean punching, what was your role? Uh, it was a six. I, I am punching, okay. so I'm using my D8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one is um, uh, rolling something dangerous, and this is related. So yes, the D8. And then uh, what did Boromir Bean roll? Six. Six as well. Dang! Um, so as you are, yes, so describe to us this scene, uh, what you all are doing together to, uh, keep your beans from being squished. That's not a little wrong. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I was waiting for I mean, us to stumble into an innuendo and I'm glad it was you. I mean. I mean, it does not surprise me that it's me. Did we stumble into it or did we simply walk into it? I think you ran head first into it quite often. The second you said, oh yeah, we're all called the beans. And that was like, well, <laughs> well it's going to happen. There. One, it's a matter of time. One does not simply walk into an innuendo. <laughs> if only there was inspiration in this game, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly, uh, there is the Amulet of the Chosen One, which I've been deciding based off of all of y'all's uh, performances, uh, absolutely is going to go to our Boromir being to Shelby. <laughs> So uh, the player, the player who can do the best Sean Bean impersonation gains an amulet token at the start of play. Their Sean is the film's protagonist and bears the amulet. Oh well, uh, you're apparently going to get pulled into the into the movie there. <laughs> Bean Prime the is dead. <laughs> you and Sean Prime fucking switch. <laughs> yeah, it's now a good thing that I have. Just... It's a good thing that I have the muscles. All right. Um, <laughs> exactly. So into the cart this golf cart coming in um hearing the sounds of a battle just beginning uh my uh start fiend is going to look around for the weaponry and the armory that is here see that there is a net that is uh able to be utilized uh and throw it towards this creature uh trying to uh terrorize the other beans uh as they lie in wait unaware of the dangers that are coming forward uh which is where I will leave my uh, description. Yep. Okay, so this has happened. And then Shooty Bean, what are you doing? I mean, as the net slows this thing down, it's a golf cart. These things like weigh like 50 pounds. So it's like slow down and uh, seeing Boromir being like this thing, just careening towards him, holding the coffee and the sustenance for our prime, um, I leap over the craft table um, and just full on sprint towards this golf cart and with just like a well-timed punch to its hood, um, knock it sideways. Perfect. And then Bora Bear me being at wow words, uh, describe for us what you do as this golf cart is punched out of your way. I will very, very gracefully lift the coffee cup and the plate of beans on toast out of the way mm. and do one very artistic side step. Mm. Set, uh, and as you do, yes, go ahead. Set the food on set the food on a nearby table and square up. I have no weapons, so my fists will have to suffice in case this foul beast decides to spring to life again and menace the other beans. And as you do this, you uh, watch as it careens and crashes into a wall and you hear a what the <sighs> crash as uh, Bean Prime, you look over, has been crushed by a falling box. And you feel this sensation of suddenly now you are in charge, Boromir Bean. You must make the movie go on. Can I at this point have run up and caught up? <laughs> yes, I've been absolutely. Running this whole time. I was waiting for something to happen. I've been running. <laughs> Slow motion. Mm -hmm. I've run over to X Bean Prime. <laughs> 
good night, sweet prince. And thoughts of angels sing thee to thy rest. And I close his eyes and I turn to Boromir Bean. <laughs> and Here's as you do that, there's just like this mist that makes Sean Bean Prime dissipate into the distance because otherwise we would have a lot of Sean Bean bodies on this set and that would be confusing to people that are not your Sean Beans. So <laughs> I run over to Boromir Bean. My brother, you will not die on this day. We are not okay. shooting the action scene. <sighs> This will give me a chance to flex my emotional muscles instead. Exactly. Get those tear ducts pumped up. <laughs> we have a sad soliloquy where you mourn the loss of your past lover and then a new person comes into your life and you immediately fall for them. Very Romeo. I will do Gondor proud today. I do not know what that means, but okay. <laughs> Trust me, I will do your fair words justice, my friend. Incredible. <laughs> and so as you have finished saying this, uh, Boromir Bean, uh, someone from the costuming department uh, shoves a costume into your arms and just says, hurry up, get this on. We need to have you on, on set in like five minutes. And you see that they're handing you a, a very large, very uh, cheap looking quality uh, Santa Claus costume as uh, <laughs> Sean Bean in this movie is playing Martin Beck, a Santa Claus impersonator. What a tragic <laughs> Santa. Ha. <laughs> <sighs> Well, poor is the poor is the workman. Poor is the workman who blames his tools. <sighs> I shall make this as befitting a Santa as anyone has ever seen. I will hold up this. I will hold this production up through sheer strength of will, and of course, my profile. Oh, <laughs> I shy away from the jawline. It's too sharp. <laughs> Oh, my cheeks are hurting, y'all. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, we transition over now to uh, Act One in full now. So we have met our hero, Martin Beck, who is a Santa Claus impersonator, and the villain of the piece is Lord Tory Alfredton. Uh, you see a, a guy who looks like very much like Shakespeare, uh, twirly mustache uh, off in one quarter, wearing a much nicer costume than uh, Sean Bean has, strangely enough. I start shaking. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, Father, no! <laughs> uh, there's also uh, the hero's love interest, uh, Henrietta Hetty Stonecastle and uh, his mentor, Harold Moore. So these are all of the different characters who are in the scenes right now uh, preparing. Um, there's, yes, a, a tragic uh, love. Uh, there's the there's the meet cute, but right after filming the meet cute scene uh, with Hetty, you transition quickly over to uh, the uh, an injury and uh, potential death scene where she's like rescuing you. Uh, so I think that with all of this, I'm going to roll our first D12 for notes from the producers uh, <laughs> as all of our shenanigans have been going on. So I'm going to roll a D12. And uh, our uh, lovely director uh, gets a note from the producers and he says, stop, 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 stop. Um, I hear that we uh, need more dogs in the movie. I don't know how we're going to incorporate dogs, but writer, you. And he points over to Shakespeare Bean. Um, any ideas? How big? They didn't say. Hundred small dogs or one big dog? Maybe like ten medium-sized dogs. That Doable. seems more reasonable to me. I shall procure some hounds. I think you just need to write about it. But sure, if you want to get them too, um, feel free. But Less work for me to do. They're sentient beings. That's not props department, is it? <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> 
<laughs> sure, it can be it can be props department, even though that's totally not how it works. That's not. Uh, <laughs> that's not how it works. I will write about say, dogs. <laughs> we're gonna say for the sake of this, it's the props department. <laughs> we're here for the shenanigans. I will yeah, write about totally. the dogs. And I, I, I look to Stark Bean. <laughs> with me. <laughs> we must procure hounds. I know just the guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have concerns. Oh, wait. Firewolves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to have hounds at some stuff. point. Stark, procure yeah. me some wolves. <laughs> I could Amazing. get you. I could get you four wolves. No, five. Are you Russian? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's early in the morning for me. Uh, I we don't want them going slow. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and, and these dogs are too. There's nothing in the rules that says a dog can't be Santa. <laughs> no Airbud. Not... Okay. Uh, uh, hmm. Maybe Santa buddies. <laughs> I, I, I retreat to the writer's room and I start making a plot where dogs help Sean Bean save Christmas. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. I'll go. I'll go find some dire wolves. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so uh Shakespearean Bean, I need you to I guess you're writing tragic soliloquies. I, that can count. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, write a tragic soliloquy about how uh Sean Bean feels that he has that dog in him, but that but that might not be enough <laughs> and he needs an actual dog to help him out. One bonded to his soul. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, this is not going to be terribly difficult, uh, but I'll give it I'll give it an average rating of three. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to give it a four because you need to convince the director that this is a good direction to go. I need to convince Michael Bay that Sean Bean has that dog in him. That's easy. That's a four on the die. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Michael, Michael, you need to understand. <laughs> you need to see the vision, Michael. <laughs> we have Michael, a dog you're... in this fight. <laughs> Michael, I need I need you to, to get the vision. Think of the explosion and the sparkler and the jingle bells in the background. And then Sean Bean carrying a flamethrower. Hand it hand in hand with Hetty. It's just a big fuck off dog right next to him. <laughs> the dog in him and out of him. And then he looks to the camera. <laughs> Maybe the dog was the spirit of Christmas all along. And that's how we end it, Michael. Michael, think of the vision. <laughs> Are there no, at least explosions? There's so many. The dog causes <laughs> half of the explosions. Incredible. Now that's what you call peppermint to bark. <laughs> Sean, Ooh. love you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Incredible. That's what okay. I'm doing. <laughs> So for our Stark Bean, uh, you're trying to procure dire wolves, um, which given the Starks, I've seen one season, but given the Starks, I would say that sounds like a tradition to me. Heck yeah. <laughs> because all of his kids have dire wolves, right? Yeah, yep. that's totally yeah, a tradition. They're the, they're, the, they're the emblem of House Stark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, yeah, so you get to roll your D8. I'm going to say... It's going to be a difficulty of three because you're not supposed to be the one in charge of dogs, but you're doing it anyway. Uh, yeah, again, I know a guy. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a five. Uh, I'm above uh, what amazing. I need. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so uh, describe for us, set the scene as you are bringing all of these dire wolves on set. So, um... Normally, when I acquire one of these, it's just as a one of my children has been born, uh, and so I give them small, young puppies. Uh, mm -hmm. But we've been asked for dogs, uh, so uh, I will just go and find 
these dire wolves full grown uh, and uh, lure them back with uh, some beans taken from catering services. Uh <laughs> these are beanie weenies for the record. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as I uh, I offer each of them beanie weenies uh, to bring them back uh, and knowing the uh, stark uh, connection to dire wolves, mag magnificent beasts that they are, uh, I will procure, uh, since they are larger than your average medium size, uh, I bring back five dire wolves instead of the 10 uh, dogs that were decided. Uh, and uh, our director, Michael, looks down at them, looks up at you. I mean, Whatever, sure, that's fine. We'll make it work. Um, writer, oh, you person. Explosions. <laughs> just in the background, just whispering in his ear. <laughs> cool. Um, get them down to the uh, the grotto. Uh, Santa's grotto has is gonna have dogs now, and you're gonna we'll we'll get them into the. It'll work out. It's fine. Okay, just get them down there. It will be done. I'm referencing, I'm looking at act two right now. <laughs> so uh, setting the scene in exactly. Yeah. And so uh, part of the set here, uh, you find a uh, very dank, cold grotto with like lots of, it, it feels very, very weird for it to be Santa's grotto, especially given that uh, Sean Bean is being the Santa impersonator here. So, you know, but uh, he has a grotto. Uh, and so it's it's a cold space, but there's strangely like a fireplace set into the wall uh, that is just roaring. And there's like a nice little uh, armchair with a, uh, a fur rug, faux fur rug on the ground. And uh, uh, looks to be like some kind of like reading material props that have been set out there. The fire's very much real though. Mm. Winter has come. <laughs> 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 so you set everything out here and a fire seems to be the theme for you i'm sorry so um as you are uh getting everything ready with the dogs this fire explodes outward briefly and i'm going to need you to uh roll a d6 to see if you survive can i oh can i assist with this how are you assisting as I am, I am familiarizing myself with this grotto, trying to figure out which angles will best suit me to provide the best impression. As I mm. see the fire, I can see the fire getting ready to burst forth from the fireplace. And I see that as my cue, as one of my comrade beans is in the way of the fire. I will run forward and scoop and scoop up Stark Bean in my big muscly arms and run away. <laughs> <laughs> which is carrying you away from all this and his big strong arms is one of your moves yes <laughs> i love that so yes um i need a d6 from stark bean and a d8 from boromir bean so i rolled a five can my description just be me jumping into <laughs> boromir bean's <laughs> arms <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And I got a six. Okay. So I didn't assign a number, but you guys both beat like the maximum that I am allowed to go. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> the stage. What does this look like? So uh, as uh, Stark being is looking around and taking in the chill of this grotto, uh, setting mm -hmm. the dogs in space for the uh, illustrious director Bay, um, and uh, noticing the fire, recalling the electrical team and lighting uh, earlier this day with the safety test, um, just keeping that in my peripherals, which means I don't 
see it when it surprises me, uh, bursting out from the fireplace at, uh, in an attempt to uh, take hold of me. But the only thing that I notice, of course, is Boromir uh, nearby coming towards me, and I act on instinct, and I jump into the arms that await me. And with the cheap, shoddy velvet of my Santa suit rippling over my muscles, I hold my arms out. Come to safety. We will run. <laughs> and then carrying, carrying Stark Bean in my strong arms with the pom-pom on my Santa hat, bobbling gently in slow motion, I run away from this fireball. And of course, because cool guys do not look at explosions, I do not look back. <laughs> Michael Bay. Incredible. Director's like, someone has to have that on camera. <laughs> oh, 100%. Uh, like, Michael's just like, okay, now we need that with Hetty. That was awesome. We need to, okay, we need to add that in. Um, you writer person, go ahead and write that into the, write that into the script. We need to add that in. Um, you know, we were thinking, I, can't we, we CGI her thing. in? I don't think that, that that explosion was an accident. That wasn't set up. We have to CGI her in. I can't risk it. Oh, no, it. that was told. That was 100%. Uh, that was meant to happen. Totally. Yeah, Are we absolutely. Still using not the old at that moment. For that? Uh, at this point, I don't know what script is what. I'm just going off of what's okay. in front of me. That's part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're going to replace uh, some of the things that we have before. Okay. Uh, do, does anyone have any information on the Santa app thing? I don't know if I really want that in the in the movie anymore. That sounds kind of boring. From what I get from the original script, it was kind of like Grindr, but for Santa. And I don't know what that implies. <laughs> That was the whole description. With the spelling of it, it kind of concerns me. <laughs> That's the whole description. <laughs> oh, it's where okay. and Santa in the wild to listen to them. It's where we meet Hetty. Oh, <laughs> oh absolutely. Santa, a hundred meters away. What? Why do I need to know? We have no red. I don't need this. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as we near the end of Act 2, I am going to roll to see what the producers want now. Y'all are surprisingly not dying. <laughs> We're good so at our jobs. Just wait. Apparently, so you're better at dying than Sean Bean is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Michael's like nodding along like, oh yeah, okay, uh-huh. Hey, um, so we need more uh, scares more scary moments in the movie. So we need to add more explosions. I think explosions are the way to go. Just so many explosions all the time in this script. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. So listen, we're going to add an explosion to every other scene in the movie. This sounds great. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> ha mm, Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. Hey, I'm the director here. I'm the director here, and the producers say that they want it. It's gonna happen. So. Oh, it's oh, but no, look, what? Hey, you're gonna get your explosions. Don't you worry about that. I was just thinking, how about we play it for like a psychological scare angle, where the explosions are further away, but they get closer <laughs> each time, and it's oh, maybe the explosions are following him, and he has to escape it, but the explosions are actually his emotions. <laughs> Okay, you're going to need to roll something for me. Is, is this an explosion um, I see rousing, before me? <laughs> it is not a rousing speech, so you don't get your bonus. Um, this is going to be a difficulty four <laughs> to convince him that he does not need more explosions. But, I, I'm he's not decided saying that no. All this Christmas movie needs is explosions. I'm saying do yes we... to explosions, but they're also psychological. <laughs> do we all, do we, does everyone hear this? Oh, absolutely, yes. I'm not being you quiet. all tuned in and listening. No. Do you want to do it Shooty Bean? I'm going to say, I think the gun that Shooty Bean has is a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> I'm taking <laughs> out the director. <laughs> he, is, he is willingly trying to kill Sean Bean off, I swear. <laughs> 
Why did I make a Michael Bay? God damn it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm convinced. Uh, Shooty Bean is now convinced that Michael Bay is out to kill Sean Bean. Part of the conspiracy. Okay. <laughs> uh, please try him um, because I did roll a one on that. <laughs> So as you are uh, failing, uh, so on a roll, um, no. I would say that this is something that uh, you're doing that is brave or dangerous because you're trying to convince Michael Bay to not to have, have, less to not have as many explosions. So as you uh, say this, something like he just glares at you and this glare is so powerful that it causes you physical pain as you're going to because we, you rolled one uh you have an injury your sean bean is hurt if your sean bean gets hurt twice they die don't hey, get hurt it was a failure to your it was a failure. <laughs> my quill just snaps under the pressure <laughs> like as he's glaring at you he like bites his thumb briefly. Oh. <laughs> I, I will, take a step back. Uh, uh, can I approach our Shakespeare bean uh, in this moment? Um, and hand on his shoulder. Uh, I see your vision. I do not know where the explosions our director sees fall in the Christmas stories of old. <laughs> I'm fading away. I have, I have faith that if any of us beams can provide a way through this in the written word, it is you. Boromir must survive. We will do what we can to make sure one of us survives. I'm not dying. That is yet. why I we are here. <laughs> Fear not. Fear not, my brave friend. Every scene that I am in is an explosion of charisma. <laughs> We're dead. <laughs> Just walk away. From up on yeah. top of like a trailer, we yeah. like zoom in and Shooty Bean's like laying down with a like tranquilizer gun lining up the shot on Michael Bay's neck. <laughs> <laughs> just stay there we'll need it i mean honestly if you want to go ahead and yes. give it a try you can roll shooting and you re to roll your d8 because you are shooty bean that's an eight four is the difficulty oh okay you get to roll again just like for fun <gasps> oh yeah i forgot they, they explode here three yeah three so 12 total I don't know the reason for rolling another die of the same type immediately, actually. There doesn't seem to be a reason. <laughs> Based off of these things. Um, okay, but yes, yeah, so you uh, progress. So you uh, take the shot and you manage to get him uh, like right in the neck with the tranquilizer. And he just goes... What was that? And just plops down <laughs> to the ground. Can we um, start a queue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have to finish the movie. That's the most important thing. Oh, we'll Sean be Bean has to survive to the end of the movie. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, I can do that. We can do that. Can we okay. start a queue and replace director, <laughs> Mr. Michael Bay, with one of us? Say that we we pushed Michael Bay off of a seat and put Shakespearean bean there. No one's going to notice. <laughs> I mean, they might notice, just maybe. Do any no, of us know what Michael Bay actually looks like? No, nope. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't. exactly. He could look like I, another Sean Bean. I will notice. I will notice that our director has suddenly taken ill, ill. And I will, I will stride over with purpose. <laughs> I could, that is, that's, that is Owen Wilson, excuse you. That is you. Owen Wilson. <laughs> no, Michael Benjamin Bay. Benjamin. I will, <laughs> that's his middle name. <laughs> when he wakes up, we're all calling him Benji. <laughs> I will stride over with purpose, mm -hmm. scoop him up, 
scoop him up, <laughs> carefully, carefully brush a lock of that mane away from his face. Do not worry, director. You will survive this, but you need a rest. <laughs> And I will take him to his trailer. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll say, because your uh, your die last roll exploded, right? And we just forgot about it? I believe no, so. I you not. rolled a six on the last one, and it was a d6. With, with, with the scene with me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say, like, added benefit. Like, uh, no one even stops you. Everyone's just like, yeah, okay, yeah. We really, like, you can tell everyone's exhausted. And they're like, we have had so many changes. We just need to get this movie finished. And so uh, you go and you you set Michael Bay down in his uh, trailer to uh, take a nap. <laughs> Maybe, like, yoink the tranquilizer dart from his neck so that no one finds that. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I will dispose of it discreetly. Okay. And I will lock the door and <laughs> break the knob. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so with an interesting twist of events, uh, Shakespeare Bean is now the director. Friends. <laughs> after, Romans. After Shooty Bean managed to trank the director who was trying to have all of the explosions. I'm gonna just do the friends Romans countryman speech, but just like switch a few words to make it like mm. I come to uh put Michael Bay in a let him rest, not to and to praise him a little bit. <laughs> this movie shall go on. <laughs> Lend me your beans. <laughs> if you actually say oh, that out like loud, that. you get a bowl of like chicken chili. Oh. <laughs> like chicken and white bean chili. Oh, thank you. Thank you, craft services. <laughs> <laughs> They're really on top of it. <laughs> okay. So uh, we move on then to act three. So as uh, we are now switching gears uh, with a new director <laughs> in charge of the movie, the show must go on. Oh, no. um, so our Sean Bean, our Boromir Bean, uh, it, as Martin acts against the villain Lord Tory, uh, but is defeated. What happens, and why isn't Martin strong enough? Hmm. He doesn't have that dog in him yet. <laughs> <laughs> I put them in, in the grotto. <laughs> I, I am going to attempt to steal his mustache wax. Ooh. Okay, um, uh, you're stealing the, the character's mustache wax? Yes. <laughs> because no one scene... because no one can be better looking than me. <laughs> no one. Valid. So, uh, yes, so this scene is a confrontation at uh, Lord Tory Alfredton's massive estate. He's trying to take over everything with his Santa app. <laughs> and you uh, handily manage to steal the mustache wax from his bedside table, which is near his bathroom, so whatever. Uh, but uh, you manage to steal that as uh, Martin Beck. Uh, but uh, why are you not strong enough? Any ideas, anyone? Mm -hmm. And this can be for anyone to add on to. Yes, please. Okay. He just buys a new thing of mustache wax. <laughs> <laughs> he is wealthy. Uh, the because like why isn't Martin strong enough? Uh, what if it is revealed that it's not even that Lord Tory Alfredton buys another mustache wax? Uh, he has a whole vault already stocked of backup <laughs> mustache wax. Oh, oh, what amazing. I wouldn't give for a good explosion right now. <laughs> the grotto didn't actually explode. It was it was a cover up. The grotto, when you go back, it is just a storage facility space for mustache wax. <laughs> He's taken over is, the grotto. That's the defeat of. It's a crushing of hope. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. The plot of the movie is, is corporate greed is stealing away moments that, that form childhood, the magic of Christmas. They're evicting Santa. They are literally evicting Santa for storage space for mustache bags. Oh, no. A yellow foreclosure notice on the gingerbread front door. They're making, they're turning Santa into a streamer. No. <laughs> Vanity must not. I may have failed in this moment, but vanity cannot. Vanity cannot be allowed to win the day. <sighs> My fellow Shons. One of the dire wolves uh, comes up and like starts pawing at you. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you for attending me in my moment of need. <laughs> I despair. What solace may you offer me, fair and noble beast? <laughs> Whines and paws at you briefly. <laughs> Listen, I'm hearing a surround sound and three dogs snoring in my house right now. Hell yeah. <laughs> All what, the other what, dire wolves are sleeping. <laughs> yep, perfect. If there's any snoring on the recording, that's why. <laughs> okay, well, on that note, I need to roll a d12 to see what the producers have decided they want. I rolled a 12. They want more mystery. Okay. But um, any specific kind of mystery? Just mystery, I mean, mystery. It needs to be more mysterious. Ooh. Where did all of this mustache wax come from? What if Hetty is the heiress to the mustache wax uh, conglomerate, and she's 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 planning to, to backstab <laughs> Mr. Sean Bean? Is you that mean mysterious? Martin Beck. Martin Beck. Mr. Martin Beck. <laughs> Played by the illustrious More mysterious. More mysterious. Okay. <laughs> they want Martin it so Beck mysterious that you Santa don't Claus. even understand why it's a mystery. This plays mm. into Act Four perfectly, honestly. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Sh uh, Martin Beck is the illegitimate <laughs> son of Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> He's an impersonator. Oh my god, I love this. That's why it's a mystery. Yep. All this, he's not following in his father's footsteps without even knowing it. Think he's it, had amnesia the entire time. Why are what have you said to him? him? Hang on, like I think everyone was talking at once. Oh no, so. <laughs> we're all so, excited uh, about Sean Bean. <laughs> Shooty Bean, what were you saying? I said he has amnesia. That is why he's an impersonator. Oh, familiar to I them. like that. It's just one of those things. It's like Anya from uh, Anastasia. Like she had these like vague memories, but didn't know where they came from. But she's so good at playing Anastasia until she remembers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the in the ruins of the originally original fire fiery grotto, there's just a page from a a. a a history book of ancient Santa Clausian lore where the dire wolves were bonded protectors of the jolly red man uh, and that's why Martin Beck has been able to bond to them <laughs> so... I love it seeing this page in the moment of my despair oh, be it, as I am attended by my faithful canine companion I will pick up the page you will see one tear glinting in the corner of my eye in the most noble pain that i dare not voice i will read the page <gasps> but what is this some ancient legend legend of the santas that have gone before my 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 head what is this <gasps> the memories <laughs> Why, why do I suddenly crave cookies and milk? <gasps> you mean to say, <gasps> and I, and I look down at my faithful wolf companion. You mean to say that the real Santa was, was inside me all along. You always knew you had that dog in you. <laughs> the Santa dog. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm crying. I mean, <laughs> this is great. I'm so yeah. glad I'm here for this. 
Right? I love it. God. <laughs> And I think that that, yeah, that's perfect for act four. Like you said, Faye, Martin <laughs> receives aid from an unexpected source who comes to help him in his hour of need. Um, actual Santa is written into the script now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be that way before, but you know what? With the mystery needing to be added in, it's perfect for you to write that in, Shakespeare uh, Bean. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> But I, just so it is not forgotten, I am Santa, but sexy. Exactly, 100%. The promotional images that will be shot for this film. Hmm. I can't wait. Uh, yeah, and hey. um, uh, I don't want to kill off Shakespeare Bean, but that would be really funny. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? What were you thinking? I, would, I was just thinking that maybe Santa could go in, give him a little pep talk, and then be like, "But do not do, do not be so. Please have mercy on Lord Tory. After all, he is your brother." And then Santa's taken out. <laughs> okay, but wait, we have a mentor figure. Oh, yeah. we do. Oh, we can kill off the mentor. Is Harold, Harold secretly Moore Santa? Is secret Santa. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we need the mystery. He's been here all along. He's the old janitor in the red it. suit. But it's it's Amazing. very Perry the Platypus where he like takes he doesn't he even takes, take off. He just he, he takes off his like janitor cap, puts on a Santa hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, I think now it's time for me to see what the producers want more of. This movie has everything. They want even more scares. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a six again. Oh, no, no, wait. No, I read the die wrong. The dot is on the bottom. This, these, this six on the six and nine are, look like that. Oh, pretty. So it's a little bit funky. Mm. Um, so it's a nine. Never mind. They want fantastical elements. We already have Santa. What do you want? Santa. Yeah, Santa. Santa. <laughs> Just the direwolves so need to be able to talk. Doable. And I'm sure. We'll and get I'm Eddie sure Murphy. He'll do the voice. <laughs> Real and, elves. And craft services could provide some magical snacks. I'm sure. <laughs> I love it. Or perhaps some more so magic projectiles that we haven't seen yet. Mm. Magic beans. <laughs> so uh we move over to the final scene being filmed uh, you're nearly at the end of this movie sean bean has not died in the movie yet as much as michael bay wanted him to um so in act five the hero and villain meet in a final confrontation who wins and does that cosmic demon witch who uh, cursed Sean Bean when the uh, world was young, uh, does she get involved somehow? I did put something in the Discord chat about Ooh. the cosmic demon witch. Okay. I'm going to look on my phone so I don't drain my computer. I'm looking. <gasps> I love it. Okay, cool. I love it. 100%. <laughs> Hell yeah. Do it, do it, do it. So, um, let me let me set a scene here. Uh, while Boromir Bean is uh, providing the uh, final uh, confrontation with the Lord Tory Alfredton, I am, as I have been vigilantly since recording started this day, been keeping an eye on the props. They've wanted more magical elements, these fantastical things. With that comes more danger. And as I am prowling, making sure that my beans can stay safe, there's a sound. I look over and the door to the director's, uh, uh, God, the word's escaping. Trailer, that's the word, uh, is opened. And there's smoke coming off the broken handle. It is a fantastical color, purple. I know that that is not something that is entirely festive. 
why should it be here? And then stepping out, rubbing the neck from where the tranquilizer dart. I see the director, Michael Bay, hands glowing with the same purple smoke. And I know he has magic. I must warn the other beings uh, and I'm going to try and find them uh, to alert them of the danger that is coming this way. Perfect. So that's, uh, I feel like that's tenacity. I'm just going to have you roll. This is going to be a five to uh, difficulty as you are trying to find them before the cosmic demon witch, Michael Bay. <laughs> now, I would, you. I would argue because this is cosmic demon witch, Michael Bay, and uh -huh. I am a Sean Bean, that yes. this brings me closer to my inevitable death for an extra D6. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So, with my D8 and D6 together, I get a 10. Amazing. So, uh, you are getting closer and closer. Uh, as, so, you manage to dodge out of the way without even being noticed by the cosmic demon witch Michael Bay. I get a laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> rushing over the first person you see is uh shooty bean over by craft services which wasn't too far away i place my hand right on the shoulder eye to eye with shooty bean the witch is coming shit I love it. So I'm going to say uh, with this visual here, you have Boromir Bean still being filmed in this final confrontation. Shakespeare Bean is locked in place as the director needing to take charge of this, making sure that filming reaches the end. So I'm going to need uh, each of you to roll and describe what exactly you, it is that you're doing to try to get this to the end uh, to see if you succeed. And for everyone, this is going to be a difficulty of five. So whatever you do, um, and I'll say that we need a, we need three successes uh, for a win. So describe to me what you are doing to try to finish this film. Mm. Who wants to go first? I will. Okay. As I confront the villain, I am striking my most iconic action pose. Threatening, but not domineering. You will have to go through me to get to Christmas and the remaining stash of your must and the remaining stash of your mustache wax. You mustache. think you can defeat me? There's no way I will be the true victor this day. I will defeat you with the sheer force of my charm, charisma, and my, I will flick my hair back, impeccable jawline. Mm, that is a very impeccable jawline. It is. It is one of my most reliable weapons. That and my charm. They will never believe that you are the true Santa. They will now, because they will be too distracted by me. Very well, then. Uh, so you're definitely going to get to roll your D8. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is, yeah, difficulty five. Let's see how you do. And uh, Seven. you get to roll... Seven. Hey. Yep. So uh, you successfully finish this sequence. You uh, describe for us how uh, Martin, Pe Martin Beck defeats Lord Tory Alfredton. I am going to flex so hard that the sleeves rip, nay, explode on my Santa suit. <sighs> the Santa hat will go flying backwards as with one a powerful punch. Again, I wish I had a weapon 
but in this case, I am the weapon. Yes, I will just punch him solidly across the jaw. He goes flying back into a pile of cans of mustache wax, which clatter everywhere. My dire wolf howls in triumph. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so transitioning over, who wants to go next? Having been alerted to demon witch Michael Bay. Cosmic demon witch. Cosmic demon witch, <laughs> excuse me. I was looking for the correct title. I knew I was missing something. Put some respect on that cosmic demon witch Michael Bay. <laughs> yes, cosmic demon witch Michael Bay. Now that I've been alerted to his presence, I know what I must do. And I switched the tranquilizer gun out for an actual gun. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, roll to shoot. Yep, there's going to be that, like, dramatic walking scene, like, you get in action movies where the protagonist, like, grabs, like, a giant gun and is just walking silently down the hallway and I do get to roll a D, uh, an extra d6 because this is closer to my inevitable death this 7 and a 3 incredible obviously not being graphic but describe for us the shot that you take and what it looks like when it impacts yeah, Michael Bay like cosmic Cosmic Demon Witch Michael Bay is walking mm -hmm. towards the filming set, like, enrobed in this, like, purple smoke flaring out behind him. Shooty Bean, in Shooty Bean style, does not say anything as he lifts the gun up and takes the shots, and you hear, like, the semi-automatic gunfire going off. And you watch as Michael, Cosmic Demon, which Michael Bay's body just kind of jerks with each impact. I think he might still be walking. Yep, yeah, he's getting shot, but he continues to move forward. And there's like little poofs of purple smoke as each shot impacts. Meanwhile, who would like to go next? See they have two left. Seeing that my warning, while heated, does not seem to be enough, I realize that I must do more. I need to make sure that one Sean Bean, at least, makes it to the end. So, knowing that there are two Sean Beans on that set, I am going to rush towards the cosmic demon witch Michael Bay and try to hold him back. Okay. That sounds like you're using tenacity. All right. That is a five. <laughs> Which was exactly what you needed. <laughs> So as you rush forward, I'm going to say that this is a self-sacrifice and uh, Stark Bean is going to go down as he is grappling onto uh, the cosmic demon witch, Michael Bay. But describe for us how he goes and takes the cosmic demon witch, Michael Bay, with him. So as I run, uh, I bypass shooting me, seeing that the bullets were not enough. And at the start of this all, back when the demon, the cosmic demon which cursed Sean Bean, it was the two of us. And now it is the two of us once again. I think of this day of recording fond memories coming through my mind and 
as I focus in, I see those eyes turn to me, the flicker of the purple smoke all around. And grabbing hold of the director's collar, the lapels, you will not take them this day. And as the sort of coalition of the purple uh, smoke comes together in true Michael Bay fashion, there is this explosion between the two of us. And at the end, there is nothing but the faint whispers of what was once there. Amazing. Shakespeare Bean, you have no idea that this has happened. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do Where as you are I? trying to get this? <laughs> You're in the director's seat. You're filming. This is happening all the way across set. Yes. I thought I could see. This is all like right. Way back behind, like you don't like maybe you hear that explosion sound, but that's all that you hear. I hear an explosion well, sound. Well, you'd probably the hear the bullets as well. I hear yeah, the bullets, you hear the explosions. bullets going off, the explosions, all of that. But you have no idea that the cosmic demon, which Michael Bay has uh, been defeated. What I'm do you strong. do as you are finishing filming this movie that you know needs to be completed to be released? While all this has been happening, uh, I can hear it in the back. I, <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, Martin. Yes, and I'm like coaching, uh, coaching Bormer being through the final scenes or like the final soliloquy uh, of the of the movie, and like I hear that explosion in the background. I feel a heaviness in my chest, and cut. And at that moment, <laughs> the ghost of Stark Bean appears. <laughs> <laughs> next, to, <laughs> next to next to Martin, also Boromir Bean. I walk on set, fall to my knees. The deed is done. I shall mourn for a hundred moons. We are free, but it caused us everything. <laughs> I'll just weep. <laughs> I will comfort, I will cut rest a comforting hand upon Shakespeare Bean's shoulder. You're so strong. We shall out we shall all mourn this day. Sweet scribe, ere we go to our final rest. Up easy. We shall we shall pause <laughs> and consider the beans who have gone before us to make this moment occur. But do not discount your own role. I deposed Michael Indeed. Bay. I angered the witch. This is my fault. Do not forget. Do not forget. The pen is mightier than the sword. You have proven it this day. I clutch my quill. Can I make a suggestion? Please. Mm -hmm. In the smoke that like dissipates, there is the. After all, we have lost Stark Beat on this day, but in that final confrontation, there is a bit of magic pervading, and we roll for our new bean. Does original Alas. Sean Bean return? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with the pr Bean Prime being returned. <laughs> The last Trudy bean. bean. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that would be a phase character because you're the bean. final bean. The final the bean to rule all beans. The, the bean, bean to rule all beans. No, I kind of love that. And so, you know what? As we pan out, we watch as all of the beans slowly dissipate into the ether and stepping out of the purple mists is the one true prime bean freed from the pain of dying forevermore in all of his films the the movie uh, a very northern christmas comes out to 
mixed reviews. It was uh, confusing. They didn't yeah. really understand what the whole magic situation was with the dogs. It felt very uh, stereotypical. Um, it was okay, but not the best movie in the world. Uh, but <laughs> Sean okay. Bean smiles knowing that he did not die in this movie. For once, he lived. And with that, we will end our game. <laughs> A true Christmas Yay. miracle. Truly. <laughs> and then another box falls on Sean Bean Prime. <laughs> but he's hurt twice. Then he's dead for real. He's yeah. happy. That's he was fine. hurt twice. He's dead. Yeah, but it's not the curse. Maybe. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, said, we only said the curse couldn't kill him, not natural life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> quicksand. He falls in quicksand. Oh. <sighs> Okay, well, with that, thank you, everyone, for watching our ridiculous uh, Sean's Bean star in A Very Northern Christmas. Uh, thank you for watching all that jazz and enjoying the shenanigans. Uh, <laughs> let's just go around. Uh, tell us who you are, what you're doing, if you have any uh, plans that you're allowed to talk about uh, in the coming new year. Hey. So um, we'll start with Apollo. I don't think I want to. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey y'all, my name's Apollo, also known as Tall Nerd Apollo. I be on the internet. I'm a little silly guy. Um, new year, hopefully I get my act together and I start streaming again. Uh, in an ideal world, I start working on my Will from Baldur's Gate 3 cosplay. Is this an ideal world? It remains to be seen. Please I will definitely, do it. I'll, I'll be on Twitch. <laughs> I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'll be there. I also have uh, some more TTRPG projects in the works. You'll love to see it. And uh, thank you so much, Anya, for inviting me back to... I don't know what I did. I yeah. really don't know what I did. I, think I mean, I blacked out it was great. It. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> thank you so that. much. <laughs> My apologies to Mr. Sean Bean, Bean and, and Mr. Michael Bay. Hey, you introduced that aspect <laughs> into the game. <laughs> and I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Shelby, your turn. Hello, everyone. I'm Shelby. I have been your Boromir Bean. I have no immediate plans for the upcoming new year because in the past year I have been in 13, this will be 13 different productions. I am exhausted, y'all. <laughs> so self-care. Uh, Boromir Bean says self-care. So if you want to keep track of my various internet lurkings, buffoonery etc you can find me at shelbylane.card.co or on various social media platforms as abyssal song or abyssal hymns thank you very much okay then we have alice hi guys i am alice i played your shooty bean today uh obviously sean bean will be watching this so uh thank you for your participation in this stream <laughs> I hope we did you proud. If not, you we have oh, no geez. relation to you. <laughs> and we're all ridiculously broke. Please don't sue yes. us. Um, you could find me pretty much everywhere online at Alice Hart. If I can't take that username, it'll probably be Hellion Hart. Uh, coming up in the next immediate future, uh, you'll mostly find me over on Lost Caravan. Um, on the 29th, I'll be playing Lancer. Um, on the 3rd of January, Pathfinder. The 6th of January, Cypher. Um, and I'll also be in a Cottages and Cerberus miniseries over there starting January 6th. <laughs> You're doing all of the things. <laughs> I, I, I do so many things. And there's also a few things that I cannot talk about yet because we haven't officially announced them on the various channels I will be on. Uh, you can also reliably find me on the actual play Monster of the Week podcast. Welcome to Reddington. We're currently on our holiday break before we start our next arc. Um, that's a great place for people to pop in if you want queer Monster of the Week um, mysteries going on. Um, yeah, check out my social media if you'd like to see more from me. And of course, thank you, Anya, for having me on today. Absolutely. And then Faye. Oh, hi, that's me. 
Um, I'm Faye. Uh, you can find me personally, uh, Faye Wild Witchling, on most things. Uh, but if you want to actually find me most often, I'm at World Witch RP. Uh, we uh, stream on Twitch and we have a YouTube. And uh, big thing that I'm excited for, and I can say this because I'm the DM. Uh, in our new year, we are starting Hellscape 2024. Uh, so join us on January 19th for the start of our major campaign, a combination of Baldur's Gate, Descending to Avernus, and uh, Chains of Asmodeus, uh, known as the Virtuous Fall. Uh, so that's exciting. Cool. I'm excited. Very nice. And then, hey, I should probably talk about myself. This is my channel. Y'all should know me. Uh, but yeah, uh, Anya, Lalian Cosplay Everywhere. I'm a pro GM uh, on Start Playing Games. Uh, my username on there is Lalian if you want to uh, be in games with me uh, as a pro GM. It's a fun time. I uh, stream my Pokemon stuff. I stream other things. I'm going to try to do like my Tuesday night streams as like a variety stream. So I just stream whatever I'm feeling like. So I I might make costumes. I might do other things. I don't know. We'll see if it works out. But uh, that was me. Thank you all for watching uh, very, very much. And uh, I'm going to go transition over now. Thank you all for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.